Hey, hi, in this video, we will see how to visualize Amazon Redshift data in Amazon QuickSight. Here, Amazon Redshift is acting as a data warehouse service where you have the storage of historical data. Now you can use Amazon QuickSight as a service which can help you to visualize that huge set of historical data which is stored in Amazon Redshift cluster. So in this video, we will focus on what are all the prerequisite configuration that you need to maintain on Amazon Redshift cluster and what are all the configuration that you need to carry on Amazon QuickSight so that you can export the data from Amazon Redshift and try to visualize into the Amazon QuickSight to get the real-time quick insights of your data in the form of a visualization. Right here, I'm going to show how to build the, uh, you know, the required dashboards in the form of pie chart, graph, or, you know, the bar graph, etc., etc. All right, so let's see, you know, how to configure the prerequisite on Amazon Redshift cluster and how to configure on the Amazon QuickSight side so that data gets visualized in the, you know, the QuickSight dashboard. Now, I'm in AWS account. This is my AWS account where I have created um, Amazon Redshift cluster, which is basically serverless. If I open the my work group here, so there is a one prerequisite you have to meet here. That is, make sure that your cluster is publicly accessible. I know that there is a risk in the making the cluster publicly accessible. For now, Amazon QuickSight supports the uh, Redshift cluster with a public access. Then only it can scrape the data from your data warehouse and try to visualize it. Okay, so that's the reason this is a prerequisite here. Now, so with that, there is a one more configuration which I would like to show you here is, if you go back to the uh, your workgroup configuration page like this, right, and then select on this one, so there is a, a button called query data. So if you click on this query data, it will take you to uh, another page, something like this. It's basically a Redshift query editor dashboard or basically UI, where you can interact with the your data warehouse, um, databases, tables, etc. Right. So here, for this demo, I have created a table with the name something like demo. It contains these many columns. Right, and I have inserted a dummy value, something like this. I'm gonna insert a few more values as well here. So what I do is I'm gonna just increment it, uh, the values here, and then we will keep on inserting the values so that we can try to visualize it here. Right, so I'm gonna append something like this, right? And then, um, yeah, so just, so I'm inserting the second record because I have already inserted the first one. Um, so let me insert this right now. So if you see here, right, so this is basically, it's giving me the, uh, you know, the thing like the query has run successfully, but right. Um, uh, so let's see if it really inserted or not by running a query called select star. So if you run select star from this particular database that is dev, and then the schema is public and then table name is demo. So right now you see that these are all the records I have already inserted, inserted into this table. Now, so this is basically, you know, this is how the query editor, editor is helping you to, um, you know, work with Amazon Redshift cluster. So basically this is very bare minimum and relevant to this particular demo. For now, let me refresh the um, left-hand side um, uh, tab here. There you should be able to see the table that we have created, right? So this is basically, to help you to understand where is that data, you know, the data is all about and where is your table is being set and how are you connecting to this particular table in the quick side. That's the reason I'm showing you this one, right? So here you go. So you have a table here and that's where the table we just queried and then, and then, you know, it is actually showing you the data set that is present in, in this particular table. I'm going to go on a pause and insert a few more data and then we're going to go on the quick side side and try to configure it and then we see the dashboards now as you see here our table has grown uh, to the great extent and we have this much data let's try to connect to this particular um, redshift serverless in the quick site create a data store and then visualize it okay that's what we're gonna see in the next okay so now now i am in the quick site page of the my location that is or my region that is us west 2 so if i go back to the redshift cluster so this is currently in Oregon region. So I have created an instance of QuickSight belongs to that region. So you can see it here. For the first time, you need to activate by giving an email address and certain input. Then only the account gets created in the QuickSight. 
in your region in your account and then you are ready to use it here so you will be landing here once you have activated the quick site if you want to understand how to do that please watch my previous video in this um, belongs to this particular concept and you can try to learn how to set up this now let's go with the uh, you know the with the dashboards here so let's go with the data sets now here we're going to add a data set right away we're going to click on new data set and then here we go with the redshift with the manual i'm going to give the name like demo redshift so here as you see here the collect the current connection type is only public network so we're going to use that so this is my data server name so how did i get these information if i go back to the test work group or basically your work group pane there you see that there are lots of endpoints um, you know the configurations it includes o o odbc url which contains server name database name right likewise so this is the place where you get the information of those um, credentials that is database server port number so port number is basically 5439 so that is you can try like 5439 is the port number for rds uh, sorry for the redshift cluster and then the database my database name is as i showed you it is dev and then the username is is by default i have a username called admin so these are the credentials that you're gonna have with you when you creating the redshift cluster right so these are all my credentials i'm gonna keep it here and then right so then you need to do a validate connections so if the validate validated or basically ssl connection is is actually enabled which means that you know the configuring the data set is clear you know is clear let's click, click on a create data set so as you see here it will automatically identify the schemas and and you know the respective tables and then automatically it will populate here something like that yeah it says that it contains the information that i have given that is database server name database name credentials right and and you know so that enable the quick site to identify what are all the tables underneath that so i just select this table and with using that you know it basically i know finishes the data set creations so while it finishes the data set creations you know basically um it will have your options here available here for now you can go with the import to spice for quick analytics you're going to go with that and click on a visualize so there are the other options where also available where you can explore a lot okay now what i do is you know, i'm going to go on a pause and try to come back with a real time nice visualized dashboards here okay so after some time for analysis i came to know that we have to create a new site you know new sheet here which is basically a tile in the sense it's a dashboard so here we're gonna go with the interactive sheet where laid out equal to tiled one or you can go for free form basically suggested is tiled because tile is nothing but it will create a, a rectangle or a square box where it will try to visualize the data and optimizing the view so basically it will present the views in the form of this much pixels the other option is you know pixel perfect report basically that is another extended capability which will comes with the pay so i'm not suggesting to go with that for now let's go with this options and let me click on a create right the these are all the you know the amazon q uh, amazon q a pop up you can close it off that is not required and now if you try to you know try to explore this quick side dashboard which i have already explained in the another video so here you go right so you have the data set that is coming from a demo table right or else you can see that you know there are here here is, there are the options where you can add a new data set which like we have created already let's go with the data set created for us so on this data set we have these many columns right and then in the visual options so these are all the visual options that is possible for this particular data set right uh, so far now what we do is here you go right so our sheet is available now we told that you know we have while configuring it we told that we need a tiles kind of visualization sheet so this is our tile ready now what you can do is you know you can always try to put something like this right and try to you know try to visualize it okay so in the sense you can always try to visualize the uh, build a nice charts here okay so far now i'm gonna go go on a certain pause and come back with your nice ready tiles ready for you and then i'm gonna explain you there okay so this is the place where you need to build the charts which can enable you to get the required insights so there are multiple options if you see here so each um you know so there are there are multiple options one is autograph 
right? Then it has a key performance indicator. Uh, then you have a gauge chart, right? And then you have the pie chart. Um, then you have the vertical stack. So there are a lot many options which is actually help you to draw the insights. So far now to help you or to onboard you how to use this particular page, let's go with the pie chart, which is our favorite options here. So what I do is, you know, I'm going to, um, so here I'm going to select the pie chart. And then here, what we do is we're going to group the pie chart with using the name. So I'm going to use the name here. And if you see here, right? So as soon as I selected the, you know, the group as name and then automatically the, you know, the, it has, yeah. okay. So you have seen the, how to draw the pie chart. Let's try to explore the another one that is, uh, for example, say, um, let's go with the line chart. So if you see right in the line chart, right in the X axis, we have given the names and by default uh, in the Y axis, it has taken the values, right? So let's, let's try to change the X axis by, by amount. For example, say if I switch to amount, here you go, right? So you have the values and then it is actually um, drawing something like this, right? So there are a lot many options that you can, uh, you know, the, um, I try to build the new new uh, graphs here. Maybe if you go with the another option that is basically a horizontal bar options or go with the vertical options here, right? Let's let's you know let's stick to the um, pie chart and then right. So here you go, right? So it has a very nice view. Um, so it basically you know trying to build a nice view. If I go back to the um, query here, the query output looks something like this. So it contains the face ID one side, you have the email and then you have the amount, right? So amount values are very, you know, they are basically varying with the only one number are basically, uh, you know, differentiated by only single digit. Okay. That's the reason the graph looks very similar, but if you have a nice, very variations kind of data set, you know, the graph would look, you know, really look a different change. So here we are just keeping the, um, you know, the value equal to amount and let me switch around the you know the graphs okay so if i switch it this is how it looks for the horizontal one and this is how it looks for the vertical bars right i will keep changing like this and also here you get the nice view actually yeah and then um so let me let me try to add uh, breakdown by name something like this i'm just trying to find out you know is there any way that it can help you to you know give a nice uh, dashboard here then we, we keep on switching to the other one. So basically it's adjusting the charts according to the selections. So we are changing the visual types here based on the graphs and it is actually changing the values. Uh, let me, you know, switch back to the another one, which is basically scattered plot actually. Uh, or, or the other options. So let's go with the donut chart. So this is how the donut chart looks actually. So it says that there are 11 records. Indeed, there are 11 records here in this particular tab. And then the donut charts would look something like this, right? And then, um, yeah, so it's basically, this is the place where the real time data scientist will gonna use it. Or, you know, the person who is actually doing a real time analytics job, you know, they know that how to build the chart real time. Okay. But the aim of this video is, as I said, you know, it's basically to scrape the data from the, uh, you know, the Amazon Redshift uh, data warehouse and try to visualize in the quick side. Okay. This is how you, build the visualization and there is an option called here called publish so when you try to be a you know publish in the sense it will go on a go on a basically um you know it will make that uh, particular tiles as a pinned one uh, in your home page okay let's give this as a test one um uh, you know the test one dashboard something like this and then i'm gonna go on uh, publish so that tiles becomes available here if you go to the your quick site so that tile will be automatically available for you whenever you go for the dashboards. If you go on our dashboards and this is what the you know test dashboard we have created and this is how it looks basically. Yeah. So, um, so this is the one we have created and the other one can be removed. Basically, this is uh, actually not needed. So which you can always trim it out and, and you know, keep it the only required options here. All right. So with that note, I have shown you the things need to be shown in this video. Finally, I can request please do subscribe my channel, my channel. Uh, that would really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video